This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get awesome, get geeky. It is the awesome cast. I forgot what that second word is. It was a geeky. Is it? Is it? Is it mayhemy? Is it wrestlingy? I don't know what podcast is this. It's the awesome cast. It's uh, episode four hundred and eight, and we are from the Sorgatron Media Studios here in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to talk tech with you guys and all gaming and geeky and a lot of fun stuff. Uh, so looking forward to it. Everybody's in the studio, including Katie Dudas, the Dudders. Hi, everybody. She is the sales and marketing director over at the Scarrows. She's showing her tongue because she just ate a popsicle. <laughs> I'm a child. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, how are you doing this week? You no. survived Steel City Con. Yes. Is this why we're a little like crazy and it's yeah, getting into that? Yeah, and... Between that and interviews last weekend. <gasps> interviews. Oh gosh, it's yeah. been twelve plus hours. I can't days. imagine. We just had our first internship interview here, and we're just like, "Well, that was awkward," and I think it's our fault. <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> That's all right. So there is that. We did. Um, there's a secret interview question that I'll tell you guys after the show. Ooh. Um, that we've been asking everybody. Interesting. Everybody. Nice. I, we're still figuring out what that cadence is because I, I, you know, usually for me, it's like, "Do you like pro wrestling?" Because I feel like if you don't, you're probably not going to like half the stuff we do here. But uh, but that's kind of you know one of those things. So well, also with us, he is our replacement, Chilla, for this week. Chilla is is on assignment, the vacation assignment. Uh, but he's been sending us pictures of all the Fortnite uh, beach shop memorabilia. Katie, you did the same thing when you it's were. It's ridiculous. It, it's nuts. Like go to the beach, get a Fortnite T-shirt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I traveled all the way to the beach, and all I got was this lousy. Fortnite t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what else is crazy, Kraus? Sorg, I'm a real boy, though. You he's know, a real I'm not an android. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, wow, well, that was creepy. We see people like... like <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I, I actually... I've never had the window in the shot before uh, behind you. Oh. And there's people like leaving off the porch. <laughs> that's, what? that's new. That's what? new. What? I see. Uh, oh, I see them on the replay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, crazy Kraus, he's another gadget... Guru of source with Big Bank International Esquire. Yes, I am. Happy to be here. Happy awesome. to be filling in. Awesome. Hey, hey, wait, what, what tech are you sporting today? Uh, well, Pi for one. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. I got my switch over there. I got my <laughs> Pixel C right here. So yeah, I'm doing pretty good. I, I just you know so, because people on video are going to see that there's not an Apple logo over there, and of course you are our our Microsoft Android. Aficionado, aficionado. Uh, so we, 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 you know, kind of catch there's up with you There's still a Mac side of the couch. So yeah, there's, okay. there's still a Mac side. Yeah, <laughs> She's sorry. still rocking a laptop over there. <laughs> so Oh, my phone is now covered in paint. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it holds up. But anyways, this is the awesome cast where we uh, talk tech, like we said. And uh, you guys can join us here live every Tuesday if you caught us somewhere else. Uh, every Tuesday here on the Facebook for awesome cast at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, you can hit up all the links and all the past episodes and the awesome chat interviews we've been doing. Those have been spinning up, talking some video games and board games lately. Over at awesomecast.com. You can email us awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at Mayhem Show. And again, follow that Facebook page. We have an awesome cast Facebook group where uh, we'll be actually reading some stories that people have shared to that group as part of our community. And we encourage you to become a part of that as well. Please also like share and everything uh subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app or video versions on facebook and youtube a lot of those links over at awesomecast.com thank you to our streaming partners rivers edge pgh.com they they replay us saturdays at 9 a.m over on that feed excuse me and i just choked on water apparently um and also um so uh, uh, they stream us over there. And also we just joined them this past week on River Talk uh, for the awesome thing of the month where I talked about exoskeletons with Ford. Um, hey, hey, Katie, vamp for a second while I drink this water. 
Yay, look at me. I had a popsicle. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> Live podcasting. Yes. Anyways. Let's talk about po- podcast. Popsicle chat. Welcome to Popsicle Chat. Pop chat. With, with Katie. Uh, but anyway, sorry. Another other streaming partner, the 405media.com. Weekdays, 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon Eastern time. You can catch the latest episode of the awesome cast. If... Uh, and of course, uh, if you want to be part of our studio audience, want to uh, participate and, and check it out live, let us know. Awesome has the Sorgatron Media. Or if you want to uh, talk to our audience with some great advertising communities, talk to producer Misty over at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Thank you to our uh, Patreon supporters helping us keep the lights on here in the studio. Patreon.com slash awesomecast. Clear our fans at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore. And at the Family Show dollar level, uh, Michael Fedor. Mike Fedor show on the Twitter. Also doing some awesome Facebook Live stuff out there as well. You guys can support the show patreoncom slash awesomecast. Um, and and coming soon. I'm as soon as I figure out how to uh, uh, duplicate accounts on my app. I've been playing a lot more with Patreon Lens. So hopefully we get a little bit more uh, behind the scenes kind of stuff happening there as well. Um, so let's get into our awesome things of the week. And everything's blank, guys. <laughs> Uh, nothing awesome happened. Nothing awesome one. happened this week. Cross had one. Cross has one. one. Yeah, what's your awesome thing? Android Pie. Android Pie. I guess we did kind of preview that, didn't we? Yeah. Um. Well, I'm on the Pixel 2 XL as my personal daily driver device, mm-hmm. and um, surprise, surprise! Last week we got the final release of a Pie. You know, normally I would expect you know and. Uh, Google to wait until, you know, the big hardware release day to say, and, you know, and now it's available and you could go get it, but, mm-hmm. uh, they released it earlier for us, which is kind of nice. That's actually why I bought this phone in the first place. Mm-hmm. The daily job I do, I need to be on those bleeding edge, you know, softwares testing and things before they come out. So it was nice to see that they actually lived up to their end of the deal, so to speak. Um, and I have to say, I like it so far. Uh, battery life is kind of nice. They added some new, um, smarter, adaptive, I think they call it adaptive battery mm-hmm. technology. Um, it's been working very well. Um, I'm just a fan. So uh, I would, I would say if, you know, when your device can get it, get it. Cause mm-hmm. it's very, it's very well done. Uh, yeah. I mean, it looks like it's, it's. It's a pretty update, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's and it's 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 fine tuning a lot of things. Yeah, exactly. I'm still on. I don't know what the max is. I think I'm still on like seven or something on my uh, Nexus Seven. Oh yeah. Um, or maybe eight. I, I don't know what it, what it kind of closed off on. You're and and, and basically, I'm just using it as as basically an e comic book reader at this point, mm-hmm. right? Um, but you know, again, seeing that versus what I'm seeing from Pi and and the other newer Android um, um versions, it's it's like you can tell like there's there's just a little bit extra. Sh- polish to it exactly right? and i know i got like one or two significant updates on that one that that brought it even up a little bit too so uh, yeah they're also doing some interesting things for um if you're into the whole work profile thing you know doing your mm-hmm. your home life and your work life and how they merge together um so they're doing some really interesting things there. so giving it- you the ability to turn off like notifications after certain hours oh and things, okay and um, really separating, making a hard dividing line between your personal stuff yeah. and your corporate. Is that so? Is that what? The, so this one uh, on the website is app actions is talking about adapts to your morning commute at work and when you use headphones. Yeah, like so, like it, it is showing kind of you know it, it's some kind of quick shortcuts at the top, like like a uh, uh, you know your you you know what you usually get. Hey, it's so much t- until you get to work you know yeah i mean this this is kind of an extension of what i usually see because i know i know i've been doing some things a lot when it's like hey um it's what what was the one like like every sunday i go to mcdonald's for breakfast or something and when you're just like oh i've been doing that a lot haven't i yeah you know like things like that like it notices (laughs) like little weird things like that or you know when we're doing the the you know the movie pass thing it's like hey it's it's so much so far to you know uh this theater that you tend to go to to the light show on wednesday nights or something you know like it's, it's that's been interesting but, but it looks like it's putting it a little more at your fingertips, right? Yes. It's putting things more at your fingertips. Um, there's some really smart, like, predictive things. Mm-hmm. When you swipe up from the home screen, it gives you, like, 
the most popular apps that you use at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they've done a whole lot more with the whole, you know, being able to make things happen easier with one finger and Mm -hmm. things like that. It, uh, I'm real. I'm really impressed with what they've done with this update. Awesome. Well, yeah, it looks like another step forward for that. So that's good to see. And the Pixel, uh, which, which Pixel do you have again? It's the Pixel Two XL, the big one. It's a what? Are you about a year old? Um. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think it's October time frame. Yeah. Okay. So okay. So, that's so cool. yeah, we're getting close to a year. That's awesome. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And, and it, do they have a rollout for like a potential rollout for everybody else? coming up here or is it you just kind of got to see that was one of the things they haven't really said yet now i do do know um there was one third party phone that i know for sure did get it but for the life of me at this very moment i can't remember the name um but it's but it is starting to roll out and remember android is is a little different than ios you know ios owns everything Mm -hmm. so when they say it's time to go it goes Mm -hmm. whereas most of the carriers and the other manufacturers all have to go through their own vetting process but that's why android does so many betas so potentially to help speed that up you know i think there were five beta releases for this before it was you know uh, complete and finished so it gives people the opportunity to start some of that testing ahead of time so that when it is finally released, it hopefully will help speed up that process. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Katie, do you have an awesome thing of the week? Yes. I just put it in there. It's Ninja Turtles. Oh, hey. Yeah, yeah. I look in the way there. Uh, so something did, they did out in San Diego Comic-Con. Um, this is a reporter who went out there, and it was a kind of a press junket for him. Uh, Nickelodeon Entertainment Labs was it was Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles VR interview experience. Uh, first, she selected a character. She chose Hey Arnold. Um, she stood back in the green screen, put on the Oculus uh, Rift, and was able to interview the two of the Ninja Turtles in real time, essentially, as they were their characters. Um, so the voices of the actors answered the questions. There was movement. Um, they captured Ooh. the movement of them as they. It's really interesting to watch this video because at one point they look down <laughs> and they can see like Hey Arnold that they're Hey Arnold in a puddle. Yeah. But it was just like this really cool like thing where they were just kind of putting, you know, using a through two 3D and 2D worlds in VR, and it's really pretty. It, they, it's a fun video to watch. And they and they they do pull back on your avatar, and it is like a 3D Hey Arnold. Mm-hmm. It looks like here, uh, but it kind of, well, it's, it's like Hey Arnold on like a lady body. It's it's kind of odd a little yeah. bit. You're so like, this is weird. It's like all right. Um, oh, that's awesome. That's great. But yeah, it was just super cool and a, a really neat way to integrate technology into like well probably is quite but might possibly be a, you know you're trying to stick out especially at san diego comic-con this is such a unique idea mm-hmm. like who doesn't want to talk to the ninja turtles that's right <laughs> even even the new kind of a little bit weird oh ninja that is turtles, so weird <laughs> you know yeah yeah the, the, that, that that's the creepy part is like so 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 they're like being live captured like this body mm-hmm. kind of situation and they just stuck a head on it yeah <laughs> that's great that's awesome um hopefully like so this is just you know something they did there like this isn't something that i can download on a rift or something no not yet uh, not yet one day not yet maybe nickelodeon's really into the, um the a um ar right now good they're kind of i think they're the ones behind the ones if you go to the movies some of the i think it's amc movies that if you hold up your phone to the screen it's called screens up or something yeah there's things that'll like pop up where you play games and stuff it'll be like for the next 30 seconds hold your screen up with this app and you'll be the able game to isn't long enough yeah you know if you're not ready for it to open up your app and you're you know on like the newest phone that loads right away yeah they tell you it's coming up and it's usually like you know like uh, not an astro but like a sh- space shooter yeah. or something like that yeah i've <laughs> caught that a couple of times I have never seen this. You never I, seen this? this? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're maybe I just don't watch enough live TV. I don't know. No, no, it's at um, it's at the at the movies. Oh, so you know, I don't like go to the theater. Half an hour of free. Yeah. Thing, oh, okay. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was like I started noticing them. I was like, oh, I should probably download that app because it seems like a fun little thing to do. And uh, and I've actually well, it's a time it a killer. Times. It right? is a time killer, right? And it's more than just me. Uh, ignoring Melina Menounos and 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 just checking Facebook or whatever, or playing my own, playing Fortnite or something like in the theater because that's what I do, you know. Especially, yeah. Except for those theaters where oddly there's no service for some reason. As soon as I get into the theater, but um, uh, no, no, I think that's a really cool. 
something. Do you think that's a decision? What? At that theater? No service I feel like it in is. A theater? I don't know. It's an old theater. It's an old theater building. It's the the mm. big one over in Bridgeville, the the the, the big Phoenix cinema yeah. one. Um, but that is the one. Think where, about it. No service. You can't get interrupting yeah, text messages. Yeah. And things. Well, we've thought about it because it seems like as soon as you walk in, it's going away, right? So, but no, oh, that's really cool. Speaking of the movies. Um, I will leave it to you to read my tweets on my thoughts on movie past these days, uh, <laughs> cause that is not awesome. Obviously there's a lot going there on there. And, um, I really think that movie pass has become absolutely unusable at this point. Like it's still a point, like if you look at it today, um, you can literally, and hopefully in a theater or in a time that it gives you, that's appropriate. Um, you can only watch the Meg mission impossible and slender man. Of all Ouch. the movies. It's weird. It's really, really weird. So, we, after three days of attempting to go watch a movie on Movie Pass last week and failing all three days, showing up and the movies weren't available. Mm. And it was on our way. We finally, we finally pulled the trigger and we signed up for AMC playlist. <laughs> um, it's the Movie Pass idea. They limit you to three movies every week. It includes the IMAX, Dolby Cinema, Real th- World D3D, the uh, reserved seating, if you're familiar with the ones here at the AMC Lowe's in the waterfront. So all of that is included, no upcharge, three movies a week, and I think you still you still get all of the like Stubbs premiere stuff. Here's the fun thing. There's Stubbs premiere, which is basically like more points and, down, and, and uh, discounts, and you get the VIP line and all that stuff. That was already $15 a month, I think. Oh, so to go from that, or maybe it was fifteen dollars a year, but it was, but uh, but like the upgrade was just kind of like pretty subs- like you know interesting there. Um, Dave is saying that Movie Pass had turned into TNA Impact from a couple years ago. That's something for the wrestling fans out there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's it's nice. The app works. It's really slick. I actually discovered movies I didn't know were coming out on the AMC app. Like this one called Axel. Like a boy, it's a boy and his dog um, movie, except the dog is a robot. Oh, cool. It, it's coming out like, I think the end of the month or something. Um, no, it really, it, 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 it's a, it really kind of ups that experience. It is kind of nice going to the Galleria mall. Cause there's like a huge family up and then there's the VIP line and we can play just went the VIP line uh, to do it. You don't even need to get tickets from the kiosk. Oh, wow. they scan your phone at the ticket taker. And you're in. Yeah, you're in. I mean, yeah, they like you. Just, uh, they, they, the one at Lowe's had a show, show ID. But, okay, well, that makes sense. But you're good to go. Yeah, because I always wondered about, like, can we just get one of them and, like, you know, you know, one account and then, then we add on the other ticket or something? And can I use it if, if, if it's just me going to the movie on, like, her account? But the, they, they do check the IDs, so you're not going to be able to swap up anything like that. So it kind of stinks because most of us, both of us have to get an account. Like with the movie pass, but man, we're going to use, this is our escape. This is, you know, how we kind of do date night, you know, yeah. on, on a budget. Um, and it's, it's worthwhile. Uh, you get like drink upgrades and the points and everything like that. So it's pretty cool. Uh, yes, yeah, you get three movies a week, Alex, and we've already used them. It renews Friday morning. We signed up Friday. We used our three movies by Sunday. Oh, so that could be strategic then mm-hmm. the day you sign up. You know, because what days are the new movies well, no, it, quote it's, unquote it, well, released? It, it always renews Friday morning. Oh, okay. I thought no, no. maybe. Which is, you know, the new movies come out yeah. Friday, right? Uh-huh. So that's technically the new week, right? <laughs> but the nice thing is also, you know, whereas Movie Pass was weird, like, like Katie, when we go to like the next Star Wars, mm-hmm. we can go ahead and get the tickets, get assigned. We pay the difference for the add on tickets in Funny. advance, just like if you were buying tickets. So like that's all. So we can you can go oh, wow. see like when Avengers comes out that Thursday night premiere. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. Because I don't think they block those out. It's all inclusive. Oh, so it's not blocked out. You just have to maybe pay an extra upcharge or something. No, oh. no, everything is included. The the upgrade fees and everything. Wow. So I mean, the biggest limitation is the you have us three in Pittsburgh. Uh, uh, no, us in Pittsburgh. We have three theaters to choose from. Okay. That's why I like the Movie Pass because I could go to anything. I could mix it up. I could go to. Small towns that didn't have an AMC, right? Right. So, um, but you know, for those that you know me, we're, we're thinking about the other thing. It's it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool system. So, so what are the theaters? Waterfront. 
waterfront and the two in Mount Lebanon. And I think there's okay. I think there's one there's one past Monroeville. Okay. Like out towards uh Delmont. Okay. And export. Um and then there's there's a few others like you know, good drive away. Mm-hmm. Um but and I even was uh looking at the places I'm traveling next year to see are there AMC theaters. Oh okay. <laughs> so um did you pay for the whole thing at once or can you pay month by month? It's a month by month thing. Uh twenty bucks a month, Brandon. Um, so, you know, again, it's, it's a little bit of more buy-in, but you're getting, it, it makes more sense now. It's not as limiting as what movie pass is doing. And, you know, and, and I know movie pass was kind of sticking their neck out and I think they kind of got screwed up with it. Yeah. So that's, un- and unfortunately we did pay for our next month. So, and we're not going to get our use out of, it. out of it. And I'm hoping they cancel it <laughs> at this point. Cause I hear about people canceling it and it doesn't have a. A thing. So go check out the AMC A list. I hear really good things about the um, um, the the Alamo Draft House plan as well, or just Alamo Draft House in general. Um, Alex says I'm not one to forecast stocks, but Movie Pass Parent Company is sitting pretty at five cents a share right now. <laughs> so that gives you an idea. Hey, after like last week of nobody being able to use their app that paid for it, I, I think they're going to have a massive drop in subscriptions. Yeah. Um, and customer service wasn't helpful either, like at all. You know, they're just like, "Hey, I drove to the thing, and your thing didn't work." And they're like, "Can I refund my month?" And yeah, they will not give refunds. So, but it's not like they have money to refund with at this point. So, so AMC A list recommend it if it's in your area, and if you're a big movie goer like I am, um, it just you know these always these make sense because it helps you budget appropriately, and you're still going out on the town. You know, as far as I'm concerned, so. All right. Well, let's take a look here and give a shout out to our friends that, at the Scare House. Hey. I'm hey. Okay. We know them. Yeah. We may not be pros when it comes to scaring people. Well, most of us here on the show. Uh, <laughs> but we know who is. The Scare House is even, even has a podcast to talk about all sorts of things in the business of haunted attractions. They're gearing up for this year's season, which means they're also hiring. You guys just had your hiring events. We you have, have another more. week of it? Yep. or One more weekend, Friday and Saturday. One more weekend, Friday and Saturday. So go check that out. It, it, it's definitely it's awesome. It's awesome to do it. It's awesome to scare people. Or if, if you don't even want to be a scaring person and want to take tickets, right? Uh, you guys got a, a bunch of positions to fill out there. Oh, yeah. So, the part of security, we got it all. There you go. So uh, if you want to be a part of it, go check it out at scarehouse.com. And also uh, check out the podcast at scarehousepodcast.com. You guys have a lot of great interviews with people making cool stuff. Some people, um, uh, Jason, Jason Patton, is it? Jordan. Jordan Patton. Yeah. yeah uh, just a finalist on uh, Face Off. Finalist on Face Off. I, the, I follow, started following his Instagram after you guys did that podcast. I love his work. Yeah. It's this weird, wacky, different, like you know. And, and I saw a little bit of his um, of his uh, online series yeah. that he was kickstarting. That was just like Dead Next is phenomenal. Dead Next is like like this like this cartoon kind of vibe to it. You know, it's really over the top, and I think it's really cool and different. So. Go check out that interview that Katie did. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to me talk. And, of course, they're doing the fa- uh, Facebook Lives every Friday at noon. Yep. You so, got it. Yay. Oh, you know what this Friday Early is? Early in the show. Hmm. Blood Day. Blood Day. This Friday is Blood Day. Oh, were you were you blood up the, mm-hmm. the walls? Day one of Blood Day. I saw you were painting things today. Yes, I was painting. So they're well painted, and now you have to blood them up. Yep. Wait. Blood Day. You blood... The walls. Five. Oh, this is for the the building. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, "What do we wait? I, did I miss something?" Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're trying a new decor here. Yeah. Okay. For Halloween. Um, uh, five gallon. Our, our landlords are gonna love it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into. We got a lot of video game news this week from uh, that people were sharing. A lot of stuff came out. There's a Nintendo Direct. There is uh so there's a lot of there, news there. QuakeCon was happening, and uh, <laughs> and there, the biggest thing here was that uh, Quake Champions, which I believe is the Quake Three, is there is the latest iteration of Quake Three Live that they used to do, I think. Um, but it, it's Quake. It's online and is free to play. You know, kind of that, you know, I think it, it looks like they're doing the Fortnite kind of thing where it's free to it's play. It's a whole new world, sort And you can buy the bundles and buy the stuff on top of it. So now you can go get your Quake on. And for some reason, the story is not working. But uh, with that GameStop stop link, but uh, GameSpot link, stop. GameSpot's still a thing? GameSpot, yeah. Do you Are you a Quake fan over there? 
I'm, I've played Quake previously in my life, but I don't really PC game as much these days. I'm more of a console guy mm-hmm. or a phone, which we'll get into later, mm-hmm. kind of guy. So, um, no, I haven't. I haven't played any of the more recent iterations of Quake. So it's cool that they kind of re. I mean, Quake- it is Quake Four, two thousand fives, Quake Four classic first that's what champions is based on yeah okay because the live that the live arena used to be quake 3 arena that they they did um so that's cool so they're really kind of re regurgitating their games at this point but um but quake didn't really have much except for the multiplayer so yeah like the attempts of story didn't really go terribly terribly interesting but uh but that's cool to see also in the gaming i'm excited about this um the uh, uh, Mario Kart is coming to mobile, and we're talking iPhone and Android, like the you know like Super Mario Run and things like that. That's coming in 2019 now, uh, officially. Uh, it's going to be called Mario Kart Tour. It's in development, and it's uh, they say it's going to come by the end of March 2019, uh, according to this GameSpot article. So that's I, very exciting. I am. I that is really exciting. Like I've played things like I mean we've had everything from like Caveman Go Karts from the early days of like the iPhone. Um, and if it's something that we can all kind of link together and play, um, you know, I, I, it's not going to be f- like full on, full featured Mario Kart. But, dude, if they would even put like Super Nintendo Mario Kart on our phones, I'd be happy. Well, here's the interesting thing. Will they go the Mario Run 999 model? Or do you think they'll finally go the Fortnite free to play model? I think they would have a lot. They could... Because there's a lot in people, Mario Kart that you, people would quote unquote pay for. Yeah, I would think people could upgrade. Um, people could definitely upgrade Sk- their all their kind player. of skins. And, yeah, you know. getting ca- buying characters, things like that. I think because uh, the stories have been that Mario Super Mario Run has not been terribly well, well financial. Nine ninety nine. You know. Yeah, everybody paid their nine ninety nine, and they didn't get any of the upgrades. Right. I mean, there was, but the upgrades weren't, I think, positioned the same way. Hmm. Like I, I'm sitting at 99 tickets at all time, okay. <laughs> at all times because you load it up, you get more tickets, and the tickets which what you need to play the like the multiplayer races and things like okay. that. I, I never you run. Just can't I never spend run, them. Yeah, yeah, I just can't spend them fast enough that I would ever want to put money into buying them because hmm. they give you so many opportunities. Right. So it's like that balance is off. But then it'd be annoying if you're like that whole play more for a game you paid for to right. you know kind of thing. So uh, it's an interesting problem they need to solve there to make this a, you know, runaway hit. Like Pokemon is still, I mean, I completely spent five bucks on Pokemon a few weeks ago just to upgrade my bags because everybody keeps giving me gifts. Thank you, everybody. I love your gifts. I've been opening them as much as I can. I just don't always have gifts to give you. Um, but, you know, I'm looking forward to Mario Kart. You looking hint, forward? hint, I think I have one out there waiting for you. <laughs> uh, Katie, you looking forward to Mario Kart uh, on, on your mobile? That'd be so much fun. Yeah, I do. I am. Let's play with our friends. The way ones we like, not the ones we don't like. <laughs> the ones I'm not opening the gifts for? Sorry, Yes, Krause. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Those I'm friends don't to get it. to play Mario Kart with us. Yeah. It's literally, I, I, I keep filling my bag and I can't open more gifts. <laughs> but then I don't hit enough Pokestops to get more gifts, gifts to give to away, give away right. and I feel bad. It's just like the Christmas problem. Uh, anyways, so we got a couple. Uh, Brandon, those two were from Riz. Uh, Brandon uh, actually dropped a couple of Nintendo Switch stories in here, and I- I'll let you elaborate on this, Kraus, because you- you've been keeping an eye on. We were talking about it before the show, but um, Nintendo finally um, um, unveiled plans for their Nintendo Online service uh, the second half of September. Yeah, and I got to give them credit. The pricing, I think, couldn't be better. Especially because if you really look at what Nintendo's quote-unquote target audience is, you know, younger kids and things like that. Granted, there's lots of us older folks that have the, have them too, but you know, nineteen ninety nine for a 12-month subscription to their online service, mm-hmm. that's a no-brainer. That, that's just, okay, sign me up. Here's my credit card. Have a nice day. And it's going to include classic games. Like right. it, it sounds like, like classic NES games are going to have some multiplayer support too. Like That's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. It, it'll almost, it's almost like they're taking the Xbox 
approach, you know, where we were talking earlier today, what is it? Four games a month. Mm -hmm. You know, yes, Xbox Live costs you $60 a year, but every month that you have the opportunity to download four four games for nothing. So Mm -hmm. if if they're going to take that kind of approach, that'll be very interesting. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Um, Although I'll be willing to bet that those, the games there, won't be ones that you can download and keep. They'll probably be available for whatever period of time. Or Which something. technically, when you look at the Xbox One service, um, the Xbox One yeah. games, you do not keep when you go off. When yeah, you, you're your right. You have to ends. keep your subscription. Gun. But the Xbox 360, you still do because they didn't have that mechanism in place right. yet. Um, and of course, PlayStation has something similar with their service uh, as well, which I think are also, as you subscribe, you have these games. Yeah. So, But I think theirs is a rotating game like you don't keep the games i think they're just available for that month for that month for or a couple months or so whatever that's, it is that, yeah. that's a little different and really interesting mm-hmm. um so uh no that, that's cool to see them going you know kind of moving 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 forward with that because i mean geez nintendo's online services have been so wacky for the last two consoles uh it, it's weird um in addition to that, in, in addition to that, Brandon also shared with us about a new um, Nintendo Switch dedicated battery pack that they're talking about. I don't know visuals. I just have two guys talking about it. Oh, there it is. There's the visuals right here. Uh, so here it is. So you can look at this. Is a, I think it is an official Nintendo brand uh, battery pack. Uh, Brandon's saying in the chat room that you can also charge your phone with it. And you, you were looking at your Switch, and you said it's it's just the same USB phone charger. Mm-hmm. Well, USB kind of thing. C, yeah. USB C uh, charger. So so you can definitely um connect those kinds of things with it so uh it i mean and i have to say it's the biggest problem that the switch has right now mm-hmm. is battery battery life yeah. it, it just don't get me wrong it's a great little screen it's a, it's a great device but i feel like it's forever needing plugged in mm-hmm. so having something like this will be wonderful you really are you really are kind of carrying around a full console with you well, essentially I, yeah I, it's a so, console in your pocket yeah or bag. so so it's not like it's going to be the nice you know battery and right it, and it's a built-in battery too right oh yeah right so, yeah you can't get it out or anything or swap it what know. happens when that battery starts going years from now like what's the service replacement on? i fix it definitely has an article right yeah i fix it'll have something you know <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I found a i found a game gear teardown on iPhone. Oh, I could believe it. Because the screen goes. I was mm-hmm. telling you about the problems where they, I, I now possess two game gears where the screens are, are gone or going on them. And and that's the new problem I need to solve so I can play those games I picked up at Replay FX. Uh, but, <laughs> but also, thanks for Chachi for, for kicking me his old uh, game gear. Um, even though, see, it's like the sound doesn't work, but the screen works like a, enough that you can kind of play the game so I can at least play a little bit of, of the Sorks things I like up. the the um lion from the land of misfit toys <laughs> with with gadgets and stuff where all the where all the old tech toys go to you know go to live you know there is a lot of like uh, there's a lot of sorg you want this i'm like yes <laughs> yes which is kind of the problem right so oh boy uh but no thanks brandon and riz and again you guys can uh contribute stories here sit us up at awesome cast on the twitter with stories you think are interesting or over on the awesome cast facebook group uh, I want to give a shout out to if you were on the live stream, you saw us munching a little bit. Um, well, well, Katie had a popsicle, but uh, the rest of us had some slice on Broadway. Our good friends have been um, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for a good while. Sometimes they'll kick us an extra pizza. That was awesome tonight. Uh, so we we're doing we're doing good on the pizza ness tonight. Uh, thanks to our friends, of course, right up the street, the original, right here on Broadway Avenue, on the same street as this studio. Here in the Beachview neighborhood, as well as over in Carnegie, PA, as well as PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the East End. And check them out. They got an awesome, they got some great social media. They got, they're doing some pizza box stacking, and uh, they don't just have, their salads are, I keep forgetting how huge their salads are. I think we picked up one uh, last week for you, Katie, right? And mm-hmm. it's just massive and it, it, you know you're just you're not getting a little piddly salad like they are not pulling back on these things uh so go check them out slice on broadway.com and let them know the awesome cast sent you all right uh we got a couple more stories here and um oh i forgot that i'm sorry i saw this and i forgot to roll back to it uh chilla submitted i believe an awesome thing of the week here of course he did <laughs> from 
<laughs> Let me take a look. This 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 slipped in before the show. Is that well, what is that doing in his slot over there? Oh, Essential Phone is getting the Pi update ahead ah, of the, the bigger phone. name rivals. That's the one. Yes. Oh. That's the one getting the pie update. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Couple- See, look at, wait, can we all just give Missy a hand right now? <laughs> Yay. <laughs> You're we welcome. We like you. We Sorry. really like you. Oh, there. So you got a heads up on that, the essential phone. Is that still, is that, you have, to have, a, they have a waiting list for that or something? Oh, no, it's out now. It, you know. But, but, but it used to be. I heard a comment on another podcast that the reason the essential phone was the first one to get it is because they didn't sell as many devices as say, so Samsung, so their testing period could be, you know, they only have one device at the moment also. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So that makes it easier for their testing <laughs> yeah. all right uh, well, well we'll touch a little bit on uh more of the i feel like we're going to be android heavy here and then uh kitty and i the iphone users might be a little out on this right <laughs> sorry <laughs> but uh in, in the meantime um i i thought this was cool i i just i love space stories and uh, uh apparently the the fastest human made object for uh launches for the sun it, it did saturday at like 3 a.m uh, it's the Parker Solar Probe, and it'll help us better understand, understand solar winds. This thing is like, you know, I don't know if you guys have had satellite dishes in your time, but there's always that one time a year where you get a notice, by the way, your 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 feed may be interrupted because it's solar wind season. Ooh, it happens cool. like once or twice a year. I mean, this is all the way back to like when we had Prime Star in 96, we would get these notices, and we're just like... What solar winds? What is this stuff? And 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 there there'd been um I think there was like something there was a slight scare a year or two ago about these maybe actually interrupting more and more electronics as they appear to be getting maybe a See, little bit. See, I always thought it was flares or is, maybe it was the flares. Or is flares and winds the same kind of stuff? I think there's I don't know. Or it's, does it's, one cause the other? It's maybe. sun stuff. So yeah, I sun I'm, stuff. I'm I haven't you know, we're all concentrated on Mars. Uh, but the idea that this this thing will go out there and um, it's it's in a it's in an orbit between I think it was they said Venus and the Sun, so it's kind of slingshotting and doing passes of the Sun, right? And as it goes, it's going to speed up to four hundred and thirty thousand miles per hour, making it the fastest ever human made object. Of course, as the as the uh, the the high gravity of the Sun keeps slingshotting it back and forth, right? Um, so they say, they said that's fast enough to get from Philadelphia to DC in a second. Wow. For your scale. Uh, so that'll take a little bit to get up there and I'm sure we'll, um, get, get a little more information on that as that happens in the next, I guess, couple of years as it gets out there. Right. I thought this was kind of neat. Parker will be able to withstand the sun's intense heat. Mm -hmm. Thanks to a heat shield made of carbon composite foam and plates who comes up with that okay (laughs) we're gonna take this carbon and turn it into foam and that'll protect this thing from the you know sun's heat that's crazy yeah um we we can say more information on that and this is also uh, important they're saying in this article and in gadget to uh, help us protect as we do more space travel and making sure like we understand that because you, you I mean, we're protected by you know the ozone layer and everything here on on the planet, but then there's others that have less protection. Like if we were to go to Mars or sitting on the moon or something like that, nobody really hangs out on the moon. So you know, if there is something that they want to do, like a little more you know longer, that's you know gets exposure to something like this, they need to know how to protect it. You know, whether that be the vehicles or whatnot, right? Right. So. So it'll be interesting to see what comes from that. I'm, I'm glad that more of this stuff keeps happening. And this is NASA. This isn't like SpaceX or anything like that. This is NASA doing this. You know, everybody uh, kind of, I think, complains a little bit about NASA not sending people out. We kind of don't need to, right? Yeah. It's more efficient to send these kinds of things out there. So. Well, it's safer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not, not, it's not a big deal when we don't uh, land it right on Mars. So... Um. Awesome. So, what else we got here, Kraus? Um. Do you want to stay game centric? Let's stay games for a moment here. <laughs> okay. Well, um, Fortnite is to actually today released on non Samsung devices. 
mm-hmm. for Android, which I thought was kind of interesting. They had a little bit of an exclusive for a few days, right? Yeah, which I find very interesting. How much did it cost Samsung to have an exclusive for days? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I, I just wonder, did, did they pay for that? Or is that just a publicity oh, they thing? For, they paid for it. Uh, yeah. Why don't, you got to wonder what that cost. But um, so, you know, I just love the idea. You know, I've been a big proponent of these devices becoming more than what they are right now. Like, I love the idea that, okay, yeah, I can sit down at my Xbox and I can play Fortnite, but if I happen to be out with the wife, maybe the craft show, like I will be on Friday and Saturday, mm-hmm. and it's slow and I'm bored, I can pick up my phone, maybe play a couple matches of Fortnite. How mm-hmm. great would that be? You mm-hmm. know, it's just it's very interesting. So I, I like this trend in gaming. I has like there Sports been Go. has there been nothing like Fortnite on the Android up to well, this point? Well, there's um PUBG is there. Yeah, uh, but you know I, I'm not a big PUBG guy, but. This, uh, this yeah, is I the have. first big breakthrough. Everything's playing it thing that's been coming over. That yeah, platform. and don't forget too. This is the first one who's t- not. This app is not going to the Play Store. Mm-hmm. You know, they are skipping the Play Store to keep all the money to themselves. That's wild. Yeah, you know, and I you have to wonder. You know, is Android now kicking themselves for having that? Uh, you know, install from unknown sources, mm-hmm. which John and I both completely don't agree with because that just opens up huge security if there's one thing you could ever learn is never ever on an android device be very careful with uh, when installing applications from unknown sources Mm -hmm. because bad that's how bad things happen Mm -hmm. and and it's for what i understand an android like but it can be just for this thing right like it just right you uh, can turn it on specifically for the thing but you have to remember you know there are bad people out there in the world Mm -hmm. and they are very tricky and you Mm -hmm. might think you're downloading it from epic but it's hey misspelled or something download this update so you can get a new hat in Fortnite. exactly we're we're completely epic games just go ahead and trust us like you did with that completely cool game you got from epic right yeah no it it opens up a it get that was the biggest thing this gets people used to that right right and of course, they are going through the store. There, there's no side load really at this point with iPhone, so they're doing thirty percent and everything like that. But and their biggest thing, so I, I've seen things where they've been calling out the price to develop for Android, which is we were talking about because the reliability. You're playing a little bit; it's not really smooth at this point on your right. on your year old Pixel. Yeah. Um, and I, I, which surprises me because it played just fine on a 6s right when i was playing it on there um so but again it's it's that wide breadth of hardware right and it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to do right because you know like we talked about earlier you know that is the one thing where apple does have some advantage Mm -hmm. you know they know exactly what's in every single release of their device so they can specifically develop to you know this median point and know that it's going to work on every device that is, you know, 2015 and above just fine. Whereas on Android, every manufacturer is doing their own flavor of their own devices. And, you know, it makes it a little more difficult to to get right for every single device. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be interested to see how that goes. And, um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm hoping, hoping we don't hear a lot. Of, I think you're just... I feel like you're just going to hear a lot more people getting their phones in trouble at the at this point. But uh, anyways, so somebody else who's also making a lot of changes is Facebook. <laughs> and they were here last week in Pittsburgh, apparently. And uh, Katie, you got to attend their uh, their event. Yeah, they had a, a Facebook. It was kind of a small business and groups event. Mm-hmm. A lot of a focus on setting up groups and the importance of groups and finding using Facebook to find business and ads. They had, and ads kind of sound like a 101 and a 201. And then there were Instagram. Uh, learn how to post stories in Instagram and how to use Instagram for your business. Uh, I think my favorite one was the uh, Instagram stories, uh, I think 201 and using it for your business because they get some really cool hacks, like things I didn't know that you could do in Instagram, like 
fill the whole screen with a color. You know how you can just like draw, 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 draw. You can hold, you know, just essentially pick color and press and hold and it'll fill the screen with color. So that way, if you have a product, you can do kind of a reveal. So you just, you know, you put your picture, then you color, over, you know, you fill the screen and then you just kind of erase the section you want to tease people with. Uh, making rainbow te text. There's a whole gradient of colors hidden in Instagram. Super interesting. Who knew? I know. You do. I know now. I know all the things. Um, the the videos. I thought that was cool. Where you could pin. I didn't realize you could pin. If you, you know, if you have a hat or something, and somebody walks by, you could pin it like in the story, and it'll follow the person instead of like being pinned in like the section on the wall. Mm -hmm. It'll follow. See that movement, and it'll follow it. Oh, I was like, I didn't realize you could do that because I'm I've pinned things on before, just kind of randomly in the background, but to like an actual object that moves. That was fun. So there's like these. So so. They're kind of revealing those secrets to the marketers so they can make cool things. Mm -hmm. But this is like a lot of stuff that isn't explicitly out there for people. It's kind of like the Snapchat thing where there's a lot of features that even just using Snapchat was kind of a mystery to a lot of people, right? Oh, yeah. I, like, I thought I had a pretty good uh, hold on stories. And then it was like, oh, wait, there's all these things I didn't even know I could do with this. And this mm -hmm. is pretty cool. And then um, and it was really it was really fun watching everybody else learn, too, because it was like, oh, I can do this. And, you know, I can download my story and use a, this picture somewhere else. You're like, oh, yeah, you can do all kinds of fun stuff. I mean, there's been moments before where I've used Snapchat and drawn on something and then downloaded it or, and then sent that photo mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's i mean you could just I, I don't think a lot of people think about doing that with their um apps like that mm -hmm. that was the biggest thing for me because I, I loved it as kind of a that's like what got me in the stories in snapchat mm -hmm. was the oh i can use this as a a uh you know try things out kind of space mm -hmm. and if i like that i can throw it on twitter and facebook and everything like that right then everybody else will see it and everybody will see it yeah <laughs> but yeah it was i thought it was, i thought it was pretty cool um uh doug our friend doug at um everything uh should i drink that yin's love barbecue all that shenanigans uh dirta he i i was sad i wasn't in any classes with him because he had some questions for facebook apparently <laughs> to to have answered and sometimes they didn't he's, have answers but it was amazing always uh we have a group on slack and he's mm -hmm. always the look what facebook is doing now kind yep. of thing because he's He's very much running into, I think, the roadblocks that Facebook's putting up more than probably any of the rest of us. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, so I, I guess, he kind of took them to task yep. a little bit. And they didn't always have the answers, <laughs> but uh, I commend them for trying. All right, <laughs> awesome. I, well, I, I was um, being, I was, you know, there was some swag here. There's some the nice Instagram coasters that that on the other side tell you how to add a story to Instagram mm -hmm. that we have around the studio now. I love the mobile studio card with like all the apps, and there's actually some on there for like doing pictures and videos and things for Instagram that in Facebook that I didn't know. So I thought this was kind of fun. Uh, uh, Missy shared these in the in our Slack too. Uh, the Facebook blueprint, like yes. flashcards, yeah, and they have QR codes that bring up like more information. Yeah, because there's a whole, um, if you didn't know, Facebook has a whole video, well, it's video, um, online video series of learning how to use Facebook for various things. Um, but they call it Blueprint. And they're like a 15 minute learning challenges, like getting started with Facebook, finding new customers, uh, mm -hmm. Facebook ads, building communities with, um, but they all, they're color coded. So you can see like what particular topic. Oh, look at oh, you just like cool. handing me things. You're the best. <laughs> but um yeah like um you just follow these little links they're little bitly links or you can just scan the qr code and then you're going to go and learn about facebook side note to... side note i didn't realize this until recently that mm -hmm. on the iphone if you're using just the camera app it does recognize qr codes oh really? like you'll get a pop-up at the top hey we noticed the qr code do you also want do you want us to show, open this in safari so i Neat. don't know when they started that but i just noticed Neat. it like recently because um, I was just taking a picture of something, so I could use a QR code later, and it popped up. So, but anyways, Magic. Um, and here's the and, and if you're curious, it's Facebook.com/blueprint mm -hmm. is a site, mm -hmm. um, and I guess these are all free courses, right? Yep. Learn, grow your business in 15 minutes a day. <laughs> That's very Facebook. interesting. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's a great way to a great little marketing tool too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of nice? It's like a little fan. And it looks like it's it's pretty well like that there's some production in that like those are pretty heavy duty yeah so these are nice yeah so did you show them the the, the instagram uh, this little instagram app uh kind of coaster 
and then and, and just has instructions for and it's just based, the basic this is how you make a story right yep and then how to switch to a business profile too mm. there are a few different things if you um have a business on instagram and you haven't selected business profile you know become a business profile you, you get a lot out of that, do that yeah. yeah you get stats you get you get other kind of cross you know other things when you cross you'll start getting in the facebook page Hey, do you want to respond to your Instagram stuff here? Um, and if you have a Pages app on your phone, it shows up all the Instagram interactions. So it's a little, uh, if you get used to it, a little easier to manage, I think. So, Katie, should I make my personal account a business page? Are you a business? I, I guess I kind of am. Sorg the business. Sorg the business. Sorg, business. Sorg the man or Sorg the business? I don't. It's one of the. You, it's yeah, one in the same, and I think the Supreme Court said the same too. So yeah um but there also there's something else cool that i had no idea um if you are a business page uh face or instagram is working with some third party apps um let me pull this up and if you go into your business um edit your profile and go down to is it contact, contact options you can add an action button <gasps> and if you're you work with like um booksy chow now each street event bright fandango um a lot of these third parties you can add a action an action button to your instagram which is super cool because that's something you we haven't seen and so unless you were a big time business to this point mm -hmm. but i mean there's only a handful um like yelp reserve and are on here so if you use these third party apps or can make use of these third-party apps, uh, you can do that, and it'll be right on your Instagram page, these action buttons. So it's super cool. That's awesome. So go check it out. That's the kind of stuff you can check out. Uh, Facebook.com slash Blueprint. And mm -hmm. I guess um, they're going around to different cities and doing these events, right? Because you guys all, I mean, you guys all have, I think we all have business accounts, and that's how we got the email about it here locally. Mm -hmm. So um, if, you, if you're part of that, you know, keep an eye out for that, if, especially if you're in, Something the side of, of Pittsburgh, apparently. I don't know where all they're going to in general, but yeah. uh, but it sounds cool. Yeah, it was much better than we thought it was going to be because mm -hmm. there were some... <laughs> some of the setup was questionable <laughs> from the sounds of things. Yes, it was... Going the, into yeah, it. So it was, but it was well worth it once we got there. There you go. I think so. Go check it out. Uh, lastly, Kraus, I wanted you to talk about this Dex thing that Samsung's doing. We talked about this a lot on the show before. Where yeah. it's your phone, and it's your your phone can be your desktop. Basically, yeah, right. right? Your, and I really see it for those you know mobile warrior kind of folks. You know the people that are on the road. You know, nine out of ten days a week or whatever. You know the the they're just crazy people. <laughs> and what but what's interesting is now with the note, the note nine, um, they have changed it where there's no more no longer a piece of hardware required to you know do the whole dex thing and the dex is essentially taking your phone connecting it to a monitor with a keyboard and a mouse and you know since you're on the note 9 you have the pen available for like a, a kind of a stylus kind of thing but it's essentially a dongle to hdmi i think it was $50 for the cable and essentially, then you could take that phone and turn it into a, a debt because it's not a desktop, but it's desktop like. Mm -hmm. This device. is not a replacement, but it's it's kind of an addition to, right? Right. It's it's you know now granted, you know, you can get Office, you know, Excel, PowerPoint, and Word on this device to do those kind of things. Where I see it from, like if, you know, for my day job, Big Bank International. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. um i see it more from a citrix or a um a uh god what's it called citrix yeah you know, a, a, a vm type of environment where instead of issuing someone a computer you issue them the, a phone that they can then when they're in the office sit, pl plug it into a dock connect to a virtual workstation you know out in the cloud somewhere and actually do real work from this device that they're just carrying around in their pocket. I, I just, I really think companies really need to take a hard look at this. Cause I, I think it's an exciting, there are exciting, it's ex an exciting Avenue that I don't think people are talking about enough. So what, so this is a, you know, there's some conversation I was listening to this week about this functionality. 
And it sounds like this can be not a replacement, but it sounds like like enough that you can just bring your phone and be able to work on a document, right? Right. Like like stuff like that. You can work on a document. You can check your email. Google Docs is going to be scalable to the bigger screen. Yeah, right. And it's not even just Google Docs. You know, you can download Word, Excel, and PowerPoint on a phone. You know, they do have versions of the application that will run. Now, granted, are they as full functioning as the desktop app? No. No, 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 no. But if you do this in conjunction with a Citrix or a VM, then you're talking entire workstation on this phone. And I just think that's a very exciting possibility. Mm -hmm. Because there are lots of people right now that get issued computers, whole computers, that don't need much more than a tablet, Mm -hmm. you know, for the kind of work they're doing. You know, let's face it, if you're out in the field and you're doing a lot of PowerPoint presentations and, you know, you're answering some emails and maybe writing a Word document or Excel file once in a while, do you really need a $2,000 laptop? No. No. To uh, accomplish uh, those goals, and you say, you know, so so is this kind of the thing where if, if, if my line of thinking of if I could get away with a Chromebook, I can probably get away with this exactly. Okay, that's so, that's like, kind of, like, except although some people would argue that the Chromebook may be a little better because there's the connected keyboard and mouse, mm-hmm. whereas with the Dex, you know, you're going to need some kind of wireless you know, t- uh, keyboard and mouse set up plus a monitor. So it's all about how you want to do work, I guess, is, mm-hmm. is a better way of looking at it. Okay. And this is part of the Note 9, and I know you're pretty well, excited. Well, it's part about... of all the Samsung Oh, devices. okay. Like going back, yeah, to, like how I far think, back? I think it goes back to at least the 7. Okay. So like the 7 Edge and the, yeah, the Note I 7s. Believe, I guess yeah. not the Note 7. Never mind. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, let's not go If, if you haven't exploded one yet. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> If you still have that, shame on you. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, <laughs> you are not a responsible person. Yes. in general, if yes. you still have one of those. Awesome, but uh, but you're looking forward to the note. Yeah, I am looking forward to the note. It'll be interesting. Um, it's going to be the far- which, and tell me what you think of this: the idea of being able to carry a terabyte in your pocket. I heard about that. That's crazy. Like, I'm still at the point where I I haven't even filled, like, a third of my 256 I was going to say, I'm at 128 phone. on this, and I'm maybe a quarter full. I forget that I have, a hun- like, 256 on this phone, and I'm like, that's insane. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so it's going to be 512 on board for the high-end device. And then with the addition of another 512 in a, a, you know, an SD card slot. That is for that guy that I saw. And I, I, and I look, I got close enough to see the guy with the, the big frame like holder for your phone that you can get in the right. nice microphone. Um, like he definitely had an Android device. Right. I couldn't tell if it was a Samsung, but that's for that guy that recorded the entirety of the gathering of the Juggalos weekend. It seems because I, fit, I saw him in front of every stage at like four right. nights in a row. Well, so. and that's the thing too. Like uh, maybe the the lossless people out there, mm-hmm. you know, the the audio files who yeah. who want that pure, you know, audio. Maybe we're but, but seriously in the world we live in now with Google Music and. Mm-hmm. And all the streaming, I, what a wow, you know. Mm-hmm. I think about the idea. If I would have told you 10 years ago, Sorg, you could carry a terabyte in your pocket, what would you have said to me? <laughs> well, it, see, a terabyte, <laughs> a hard drive, right, is a yeah. terabyte, you know, yeah. typically. Yeah, that's yeah. a terabyte but, drive. But to have a functional device with a terabyte, <laughs> yeah. let's let's qualify that a right. little bit, you know. Like, oh, right, because it's not just the, sp- uh, the platters no, in no, your pocket. Like, yeah, this been, is an actual. We've been able to do that for, like, five years yes. and just have, like, something that size right. with a terabyte. But I still got to plug it into my $2,000 computer to do the cool exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, um, so no, no, that's, that's definitely, um, a bit of a mark there, I think. Yeah. So that's really cool that we're at that point. So, um, geez. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. On that note. Hey, but, and it is possible. Like, I think there's some people at this point that are, are foregoing the computer thing, realizing they do most of that stuff on a phone and it works in certain contexts. Right. And don't forget too, the note has that much. Larger screen. Mm-hmm. It does have a stylus. 
you know, there are people that there are plenty of people in the world right now that that could be their primary quote unquote mm-hmm. computer. Did you have were you saying something? No, that's just wow. <laughs> that was just a that was just a shock yeah. sound. Yes. <laughs> um thoughts uh, Amanda's asking in the in the chat room thoughts on uh, the Samsung Home which is like kind of their like Siri Home kind of thing, I guess. Do you want um what's his name Dex? No, it's not Dex. Um what's their it's not Siri, it's not Google, it's yeah. Bixby. Bixby, yeah. Bixby in your living room. Mm-hmm. So, just what we all wanted. The thing you didn't know you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. So, yay. Yeah. <laughs> yay. All right. Something else to get a little bit more excited about. I want to give a shout out to our friends supporting the show before we head out of here and let you know what else is going on in the geeky world. Uh, Alex Cars. Uh, you can check them out. Alex Car- AlexanderCars.com or Alex Media- AlexCars.media. Jeez, let me try that again. AlexanderCars.com and AlexCars.media putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print to digital projects. Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. He could do it all. And probably, I bet he could get away with it with a Note, with a Note 9. He could do a lot of those things. But no, he uses a real uh, grown-up computer. And uh, you can check out his work at AlexanderCars.com and AlexCars.media to get started. That's uh, Cars, K-A-H-R-S, for you guys out there. Thanks so much to him. He's a big contributor to this and other podcasts on there. Also, he has a podcast on the network with Occupy Pro Wrestling. And uh, he's worked with us on a few different projects. Uh, And hopefully more you're going to see very soon. Maybe eventually related to this show. Maybe, wow. maybe maybe it could happen it could happen so thanks to him hey there's a lot of stuff going on first of all i want to give a shout out for our friends at the thrifty podcast they're having an event happening this weekend um over at mr roboto project and i want to bring up the details so i don't mess it up it's saturday night what is that the 18th i believe um but they're having a let me get the title right it's a junk sale, and they're going to have live music in the full spirit of Thrifty, of course. Uh, so uh, go check that out. Um, it's $5 to attend. Or if you want to sell your junk, uh, you can be a part of that, too. <laughs> Contact them for information. Hard Times, a Thrifty song. Uh, thrifty. Th- thrifty. Oh, I've, I'm just losing it. Thrifty Thon. Are you okay over there? Oh, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm just enjoying things. <laughs> Me not being able to say words? No, just... The combination of words. Combinations. Thrifty Thon. Uh, hard times. The Thrifty Thon. Uh, <laughs> okay, I, I I get what I'm almost saying now. Uh, <laughs> the fundraiser for common folks, hosted by Toddy over there, uh, August 18th at Mr. Roboto Project. Uh, that's seven to eleven. Uh, music by the Bluffs, YRS, uh, Ryan Thompson, and Tape Project. Shenanigans is oh the Ryan Thompson cassette uh, tape project. I wonder if that's the thing they've been talking about. So go check that out. Information, check out the Thrifty Podcast on Facebook for the event uh, and information on that. And please go be a part of that as well. Also, oh, I got a message in the corner you guys are reading. Uh, But anyways, um, also the Pittsburgh PodCon has been announced. That's going to be on International Podcast Day um, coming up here on September 30th. Uh, We're going to be doing a panel and Katie's going to be a part of it as well yeah. uh, on podcasting. That's going to be streaming on the official International Podcast Day feed, as well as live editions of the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And uh, the Wrestling Mayhem Show and some other shows are going to be a part of that as well. Also, if you have a podcast out there and want to be a part of it, there is going to be sort of a podcast alley as part of this. Um, the submission form is over on the event for Pittsburgh PodCon over on the Sorgatron Media and Sidekick Media Services and River's Edge pages. Um, and uh, you can get, you can have a table. Bring a table. Promote your podcast alongside everything. We want this to just be a big gathering for, podcasting, po- for podcasters, of podcasters, podcast fans. And uh, it's going to be at a really cool new brewery over there in the Strip. Apparently the old Spaghetti Warehouse location oh, cool. is where we're going to be. Oh, that's um, so that's uh, and and so there'll be more information as we go here about uh, who's live streaming and everything. It's going to be I think five to ten. 
uh, officially that night on Sunday, September 30th. So please join us and uh, uh, celebrate International Podcast Day with uh, live podcasts and our podcast friends. I'm seeing a list of people already signing up for this to be a part of it. It's uh, it's a pretty cool list so far. Um, and and podcasts I haven't heard of before. Do you know there's a there's a cupcake podcast? No, I did not. I know do that. now. Awesome. <laughs> and adding that one to the list. So thanks a lot to that and our friends at River's Edge. Uh, we're helping them out with that, and we'll be doing the live stream as well, much like what we do here. Um, <laughs> Alex has been in the chat room talking about he got a, 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 a Amazon Echo and he's been uh, learning what to, what he can do with it. Uh, side note: The first thing he did with after buying his Echo was change change the wake up name because his name is Alex, and that could be uh, bad trying to use a uh, uh-huh. name. So two A names. Yeah, I mean, uh, we we keep waking up when we're talking about a wrestler on WWE. Um, that last name Bliss, first name A Train. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, that's that's definitely a concern. I, I'm glad that you can do that. Yeah, you can change that wake word, and just a lot of us just don't, I guess. But I need to change a wake word. What if I change the wake word to the same as Google Home? Oh. And let them compete with each other. Oh, man. <laughs> Crazy Kraus. Ron Kraus. Crazy Kraus on the Twitter with the Ks. Yes. Ks all the, t- all the way. There you go. You tweet about things. You do things. I do things and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I go places. My wife has uh, been opening her own business, and this weekend will be at two craft shows. If anybody's interested, I would love to give her a plug, but I don't have all the information. (laughs) But if you check my Facebook page, I'm sure there will be information on the days and where we are. But you'll have something to plug officially next time you come on. Yes, I will. There you go. There you go. There you go. Always supporting new small businesses. Katie Dudas, the Dutters. Hi. Like I said, go check your live stream out every Friday on the Scarehouse Facebook page. At noon. At noon. noon. Are you, weren't you trying to like put that other places too? Like, weren't you like dual? I was Instagram. I Instagrammed for a little bit before. I, I usually try to Instagram for just a smidge before the oh, okay. Facebook just us BSing. <laughs> I've been trying to use that a little bit more. I mean, I get a couple people hopping on, but definitely not Maybe. the mass or anything like that. I think it works when you have like a huge audience like you guys have going yeah, on. Yeah, people right? pop up. I'm like, hey, you actually want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like exactly. I'm interesting. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anything else going coming up? The hiring event, of course. Yeah, just the hiring event this weekend. That's the big thing. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's almost time. How Act- many people does it take to run that? To do that? Actors or just in general? In general, oh gosh, we sent out last year, for example, around 150 W twos. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We we hire. In how many weeks? Uh, we're actually, we're, what, do we open or how many are we open? Yeah. How many will, are you open? Seven. Okay. So it's 100, 150 70, people yeah. for seven weeks. Wow. Yeah. And there's five, five of us full timers and, um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and the rest are, you That's know. That's going to be insane. Yeah. It's not. It's like yeah, having, you know, just orchestrating us when we're open nights and like our orientation will be crazy because there's a ton of us. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. But it's fun. And mostly new people, right? We get a lot of year. new people every year. Yeah, we, we keep a lot of uh, of the veterans, but then we always get a, a bunch of new folks, too, that come in that are real excited about it. So it's fun. That's awesome. Go check it out. Scarrows.com. Scarrowspodcast.com. We're spooky. To hear more Katie. With me. At Sorgatron on the Twitter. Thank you, producer Missy, for bringing Yay, us props and things and keeping it. everything straight throughout the show. Uh, a lot of things going on. Again, shout out to Thrifty Podcast. Shout out to Occupy Pro Wrestling, as we mentioned here on the show. And check out all the great shows over at SorgatronMedia.com. Follow everything, subscribe, and join us here next week at nine or 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the Facebook Live. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Amanda. Who's Thank Doug? you. Uh, yeah, who's that? Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Oh, Katie, you're here. Uh, <laughs> thank you, you're everybody welcome. else. Dave uh, has popped in here uh, throughout the evening and part of this show. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at Sorgatron Media. Dot com.